I love it. But let's get to this wonderful book that came out of USC about Welcome to AI. And we, you know, everybody's been talking about 2024 being the year of AI, but- The surveys we've done at USC have shown a, a lot of interest, especially over the last year, way more than there was before. In 1999, there was only like 18% thought it was gonna be a thing. And now everybody does. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you find is that um, they're interested and they're exploring it, but very few are using the many of the tools in their actual work. Chat GPT seems to be the obviously the one that most people are familiar with, but there's lots of other tools out there that people haven't explored very much yet, and I think that's that is going to be the where the rubber meets the road if these tools catch on and people start using them in their day to day work. It is an awful lot of fun, don't you think? And that's what our students say. We've done a number of panels with students, and they are much more uh, familiar with AI and much more comfortable with it. And when we ask the question, "What should people do?" they say, "Play with it." Uh, get some tools, figure out your, your husband's birthday present using AI or, or design a birthday card for one of your kids. You know, use, get familiar with these in a rudimentary way. That's no, not, there's no risk associated with it. Prompting is its own art form. It's right. kind of like, and to me, it, it's like prompting a client to come up with being able to articulate what they do. Writing prompts is, a, is the secret to at least uh, chat GPT and probably many others. That's the, where the partnership, the collaboration between man and machine is really important. It won't do anything very impressive unless you know what it can do and you know how to ask it to do that. That's where the, the, uh, the, the secret sauce comes in. You must be seeing some really incredible things at USC. Well, I don't know if they're incredible. I think that graphically, AI has a long way to go, but I can send you a, a little bit. Ah, I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I can send you a little video that uh, you can show that our students made in, in a few hours. And it's about, it's about the relevance report. It's the hero's journey in, into AI. And, and they made it all on AI. And I'm narrating it. And it's not my voice. It's not me talking. They took samples of my voice and created narration. So the whole thing is, uh, is AI created. It's, it's very professional looking. In an increasingly complex and confusing world, a curious explorer embarks upon a quest to unlock the secrets of AI, the new magic in the realm of communication. Her journey is riddled with challenges, testing her at every turn. future. Welcome to AI. How are you dealing with this with students? Their use of like new rules of AI, you know, at Annenberg. I mean, you want well, them to play with it, but how do you break down? Well, yeah. yeah. Sorry. The, the initial concern in a lot of academia is the question of students using AI to do their homework or write their papers or do their thesis. So uh, that the initial reaction is, oh, my God, everybody's going to cheat using AI. But once you get past that, especially in a school like Annenberg, which is a communications journalism and PR school, and uh, we embrace it fully and we encourage our students to use it in the class. When we're writing, we ask them to use AI to develop a draft. You, we're trying to teach them how to use AI as effectively as they can to try to discourage them from doing it and say, we want you to, you know, type this up on a typewriter, please. And use, you know, use an eraser to uh, correct a it. blue book. It, yeah. So blue book is, is uh, it, it just doesn't work as much as people want to go backwards to uh, things that they used to do when they were in, in starting their careers. It's not going to happen. So we have to embrace it and teach people how to use it ethically and uh, appropriately and effectively. In ethics, when you think of ethically, uh, what are the big ethical issues in your mind? I mean, what are the three things you say to students, look, this is where we have a real problem? Well, first of all, I think it's whether you disclose that you've used it. And I think it's a problem for agencies and their clients. When do you tell them, we created this briefing book using AI, or we created this speech using AI? Uh, are we obligated to do that or not? I think the same thing applies to students. If they're using AI for an assignment, that should they tell you or should they not tell you? Uh, the second thing is um, the uh, ability, like with my voice on that video, it was <coughs> completely um, fake. And uh, one of the students turned in a video to me in my class that had Barack Obama talking about what a great guy he was. Now that was funny and everything, but, and, but you can create uh, videos now that are very realistic 
that uh, uh, can show somebody doing something they didn't do. So that, well, that's, that's of, certainly been an issue, of course, in political campaign right now. It's being used. Yeah. Right? And then the, the third thing is what the Hollywood strike was all about. It's this, it's this use of somebody's image over and over or without their authorization. And there's a story in the relevance report written by Henry Jenkins, who's a leading authority on entertainment fan bases. And a lot of them create um, Star Wars with their family in it or with their other actors in it. And they, they're very sophisticated about this. And then they spread it around on social media. And, and the question is, do you want that? This, uh, this George Lucas wants Star Wars being played by Fred, you know, Fred Simpson um, and, and as Darth Vader or that sort of thing. And if you don't, how do you control it? How do you uh, stop these it? People are your biggest fans. Do you want to you know, arrest them and put them in jail for doing this? So it's, it's those kinds of things that I think are going to be really prickly issues to, to uh, determine um, which is the right way to go about it. Yeah, I guess it's a lot of um, potential lawsuits coming down that way, right? Yeah, for sure. And the actors was the number one thing in the actors' uh, contract that they were upset about it, right. using their image and not being paid for it. I love embracing all of the new technologies, but I'm also sad because I read three newspapers every morning. Um, I actually still read them in paper form because I like it. It's, it's a yeah. visceral way of looking at the world. It's not just getting, I don't care about the print on my fingers like some people talk about. I care about seeing yeah. how it's laid out for me. And that's over. Changed a lot. We did a study with, uh, we did an ethnographic study on mobile phones with uh, a group of Gen Z uh, students. And we at tracked what they did on their phones, how they get information nowadays. And we did for a couple of weeks and they did surveys, they made videos, they told us what they were watching, what they were doing. And they don't get any of their information from the sources that you and I are accustomed to, none. Mm -hmm. And and you, you have this assumption that if they're not reading the newspaper, watching TV news or reading magazines, they don't read magazines, uh, that they're, they're not informed. No, they're it informed. It's not true. They're extremely informed, and I think often better informed than adults. And so they're getting the information. They're just getting it from different sources. Main, right now, mainly TikTok. Most of them start on TikTok for half an hour the mo moment they get up in the morning. And that's the, the, the place where they're getting most of their news. And it may not be as accurate as the New York Times, but it doesn't mean that they're not uh, discerning in, in what they believe, and they can look in other places. So it's, I think it's a concern that older people have because this is the way we right. did it, but it's not going to be the way they did it. And, and I'm not really worried about it. I think that uh, the younger generation has a better sense of what's editorial and what's news and what's opinion and what's news than uh, older people do. And, and I think that they know when an influencer is, is uh, selling something and they would know when they really believe in something. Yeah. So I, I don't think there's anything too much to worry about. It does scare you with AI, though, that the amount of misinformation out there could be overwhelming, especially during a political campaign. And uh, that's going to be uh, this campaign, particular campaign is going to be very interesting in that regard because it's so polarizing and both sides are going to be doing everything they can to make the other guy look bad. Well, I hope you will come back and do another interview at the end of the year and we'll see where we stand. No, I'd love to anytime. Okay. Thank you so much. Pleasure talking to you. Take Bye care. Bye-bye.